Okay, here's a little um, info about um, calibrating their TDS scope, and I'm going to use a 700D folder. I looked for the 600 and the 600A or the 500, 500A folder, and it looks like I don't have any of those set up for automated use, so it's possible that all of those scopes I did in the past, and I've done multiple of all of them, um, it's possible I didn't use an automated system, I just did it manually. They're pretty easy to do. So, so but anyway, in the hope that you can do it automated, here's um, some thoughts. So let's see. The duty list, the duty list tells the software what, what um, scopes can be calibrated. And in general, like you see how, like for example, 754D, um, but you can also put um, 754C. Generally, the software will work with earlier scopes. However, the 600A, non-A, the 500A, non-A, those are a fundamentally different designs, so you probably couldn't use this software with those. But um, but if you were to, like, like this software could, could be used to, to calibrate a 540B, for example, and not just a C. Um, so anyway, you add, um, if you were doing a C-scope, you would add to the duty list C, and this may have already had it there, I may have put it in. Um, G-config, this is your G-pib configuration folder. And this is a working file, this, this actually works. So, system, this is all going to be system 1, the, the name, um, device under test 1, which is your scope, so you don't change that, and so you're going to set its address, its GPIP address to 1. You can see that uh, for the signal generator 1, I've assigned it Fluke 6060A, which is a valid um, instrument as far as the software is concerned, and it's signal generator 1, and its address is number 2. And I think that's the way the factory had it originally, number 2. They put a little star here in front of it to um, tell the software to ignore or not to look for this instrument so you need to take that away and so a little further down I guess you can see it on the screen this is um, SG signal generator number two it's the same instrument Fluke 6060A it doesn't matter like I'm actually using a 6061A which is a slightly better instrument but you still tell that it's 6060A and it works fine and then data precision 8200 address 17 again I'm taking a little star out from the front and the digital multimeter is a fluke 8840A. The way I know these, the way I was led to these instruments is you just simply use a text editor and look at the executable files and see what words are human readable. But not all instruments that you find, even though they're in it, are fully supported. So some things, some of the HP signal generators aren't fully supported. And I actually use a fluke 8842A, which is a better instrument but it doesn't care if I put a, you know, if I just put the, don't put the two there, just leave it as an A. So that's how this file works. Let's see what's next. Um, router configuration file. Most of this file isn't used. It's a very complex file. I doubt if I can explain to you how it works because I probably don't know myself. Um, when you're looking at this file, there's like, if you were to make this file the whole thing about this big, the bottom half of the file actually moves up to the right hand. So if you print it out looking like this, all the way down the file, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this bottom stuff has to go to the top. And so it's possible to print the whole thing out, to format it so it prints nicely, and then swing the bottom information to the right, then it makes a little more sense. But for, for your purposes, you're looking for um, the instruments that we just spoke about, the data precision, however we go. By this four, you need to put an DP8200. Um, it's not real picky. Um, these entries work, so so I'll just stick with how I have it. I don't. You don't want to be changing any info in here for sure. This is just telling the instrument how to step through. And there would have been um, another control file that they don't haven't released with this that would tell the router, a physical router, how to change connections. And um, and again, my system's um, automated except for I have to change leads around. Let's see, what else? Um, adjust bat. 
just loads it so edit and so my PCA configurations down here cats log off you can play with that if you want um, I guess we're looking for team mode for team mode I'm happen to be using C here it's two letter combination yours will probably have an M behind it which means um, manual and you of course don't want the M to get things happening um, the T mode it, it varies from machine to machine for some scopes this C will work fine for others it needs to be you know something else it could be V or you know what have you, you just have to go through the combinations to get something to work um, if you get the wrong letter there um, it might work fine as far as the data precision 8200 but when your signal generator starts kicking in it it may not give you instructions to tell you how to move jumpers around oh crap you're kinda of screwed so you have to change the T mode around until you finally um, until you finally find a combination that works for your scope other other T modes will it'll show on the screen when you're doing calibration limits it'll show you whether you know whether it's over or under, it'll show you actual um, calibration results as you're going along. So, for troubleshooting, I guess. So, anyhow, that's what that file looks like. Um, your biggest problem is going to be the R config for sure. Because since it appears, I'm starting to think that maybe I never calibrated the 500 A's or earlier, the 600 A's or early, earlier with, a, with an automated system. And if that's the case, um, you better hope that, that these files work with the 500 A's. They may not. So, I mean, you're just going to have to screw with it and play with it for a couple of weeks and find out whether it does or doesn't work. Um, but it looks like the only things that I really changed on this, on this particular file, was the data precision 8200. Um, it, that might, it may even be... Um, you know, I don't know if, if you don't have this particular file with your 744. Let's see what the... I may have a folder that has... that's set up for the 700 A's. Nope, that's installation. That won't do it. See, I probably would have just um, whittled this thing, had this thing work on a 700 A as well. It's funny, I must have lost some files somewhere on some machine somewhere because I, I know, for example, that I did 744s in the past. But I don't... I don't see that they're loaded on this particular... Um, maybe I got them rattled somewhere. No, that don't look like it. So anyhow, maybe that'll point you in a direction. I mean, you already know a thousand times more and um, what I did when I figured out how to get this thing going but it doesn't look like um, doesn't look like I have a working no, what's, nope I haven't edited those files but anyhow I take that D folder the information I showed you as far as the duty list, changing that, the router configuration file, that should be pretty straightforward for you update that for your equipment, and the gconfig folder. And then you can use a text editor and you would look at, you know, wherever the program is. Like, for example, if you had this particular um, program, you'd open it with a text editor or a hex editor and you would just look for human readable words in there, signal generators, and you'll find them lumped together. And they're called out just like the DP8200, you'd look for that text string, look for all of its instances, and you'd start to see, oh, there's some configuration files. Tech probably had a way to load um, configuration files for unique instruments other than what's on the list into these, but I have never seen an example of it, so I don't know how to do it. But I don't see... See, like I've done 540B machines, 744A machines, they're actually the same. Just one's a color version of the other. So, but I don't even, don't even see those files in here. So, 
Because it'd be nice to, like, for example, um, maybe this folder. Gconfig on this one. It's going to be the same. I don't know why we're even looking at it. Um, but I got it here. Yeah, see, this one is the same setup. So let's look for the um, R config and see what it looks like. I think once they got this working, I don't think they really um, messed with it all that much. So there's a, a chance it'll work on the earlier um, earlier scopes. But but after the 544As, they went to the 500Bs, were a substantial redesign. Really a much better scope, if, for all purposes, a much better scope. So. Um, here we have my same little changes, so this is these are the things that I would edit on your router table and probably leave everything else alone and and hope that these steps that are being called out here are going to be the same with the 500s. Um, I don't know, maybe a 50% chance or less. But this should get you going in a direction. It'll help someone out at some point anyway. Okay. I know.